How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the channel where we create comics and manga. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, then I hope you can check out some of my other videos after you're done watching this one. We've already covered a ton of cool topics such as writing scripts for your comics, lettering your comics like a pro, choosing the best speech bubbles for your manga, and even picking the best fonts for your comics. If any of those sound remotely interesting to you, I'll link them down in the description below. In today's video, I want to give you all 5 tips for improving dialogue in your comics and manga. Some of the ideas in this video are going to build off of some of the topics brought up in my How to Create Relatable Characters video, so be sure to check that out at some point after you're done watching this one. Make sure you watch this video in its entirety so you don't miss out on any crucial information that could potentially help you take your comics, manga, and webtoons to the next level. Let's get right into it with tip number 1. Diversify character speech patterns. Take a moment to think about some of your favorite characters in anime, manga, TV shows, or movies. Now think about a few words you could use to describe their personalities. Try and recall some of your favorite lines by this character. What I'm trying to get you to notice is, iconic characters have unique speaking patterns. In the real world, everybody's different. Some people have accents, some people use slang, some people talk very formally, and some e-girls go oo woo. It's important to think about this when writing dialogue for your own original characters in your comics and manga. It's very easy to get stuck in your own head and make every character quote unquote sound the same. I'm sure you've heard this advice before, write your dialogue similar to how you would speak in real life. While this statement has some truth in it, I think it's better to think about it like this. Imagine you're a silent observer watching the events of your comics and manga take place. Taking yourself out of the equation puts you in the audience's shoes so you can objectively judge your comic or manga's dialogue. To distinguish between characters, it's a good idea to give them different speaking patterns. This is especially true if you have a large cast. It's also important to consider who the character is speaking to, because I'm sure you don't talk to everyone in your life the same exact way. To give you an example, I want to use some characters from the game Super Danganronpa 2. Don't worry if you've never played this game, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to pull up a few dialogue frames to show you how distinct each character's speaking pattern is. Starting off with this first character, Sonya Nevermind, we can read her line and understand that she's talking in a formal tone. Her way of speaking can be described as slow and reserved. She usually talks in well-formulated sentences. This emphasizes her character's aristocratic background and lifestyle. Let's take a look at another character. Fuyuhiko Kuzuryu is the son of a mob family. As a result, his speaking pattern can be described as aggressive. He speaks fast and uses a lot of cuss words. Most of the time, he speaks before he thinks. One final example I'm going to use from this game is a character named Mikan Sumiki. When she speaks, she usually talks incredibly sluggish and stutters. Whenever she does talk, she's usually seen apologizing, even if she didn't do anything wrong. This emphasizes her insecurities and desire to be accepted. What I want you to take away from these examples is that characters become more recognizable and memorable when they contrast with each other. You can visually emphasize this even more by giving different characters different speech bubbles, different fonts, or bolding certain words. Transitioning into tip number two, I want to talk about the role of your protagonist. Sometimes when you're watching a show or reading a book, you might notice every character is far more interesting than your central protagonist. This can be seen very clearly in harem anime where a bunch of top tier girls throw themselves at a character whose name we are more likely to forget. Why is this though? The answer is relatability. The role of the protagonist is to take you, the reader, or viewer, through the story. Because of this, some writers create what's known as a blank slate protagonist. Basically, these protagonists are your average everyday Joe or Jane that anybody viewing could relate to. This character might have the most generic appearance, grades, home life, etc. because their main role is to immerse you in the story. I personally don't like this approach because like I mentioned before, your lead character becomes overshadowed by the rest of the cast. Some examples of anime that use this approach include Haruhi Suzumiya, Shuffle, Evangelion, and any harem Ichi show. If you're going to use a blank slate protagonist approach, your main character's dialogue will be synonymous with the author's voice. You would make this character speak and react how you yourself would react in a situation. This allows the plot to move forward and the viewer to have some connection with the quote unquote empathetic character. I much rather prefer the approach where your lead protagonist is not a catalyst for plot development. In my opinion, your protagonist should be one of the most interesting characters in your comic. Because of this, when writing dialogue for a character that isn't based on a generalized idea, it's important to think about it strategically. Maybe your protagonist is nothing like you at all. Maybe your protagonist knows information that nobody else knows. Maybe your protagonist isn't even the good guy. All of these unknowns make your protagonist that much more interesting. Sometimes you don't need to cater to your audience to create a character that your audience can relate to. One of my favorite examples of this can be found in the series Da Ra Ra Ra. If you've never seen the series and planned it really soon, I'll leave a timestamp to when you can skip to because I'm going to spoil something. The main character, Mikado, is the perfect example of a misleading protagonist. The story frames him in the beginning as a normal and average high school student who gets dragged into a mystery revolving around a headless rider and a color gang. The plot twist revealed later on is that our protagonist was actually the founder of the gang the entire time. This twist couldn't have been achieved if the author didn't portray his character as a blank slate protagonist. Whenever this character was present in the story, his speech patterns could be described as average and bland. However, after the reveal, we learn that the character we thought we knew actually has a more sinister side. We even see him explicitly say he's annoyed at how bland his appearance looks compared to his friends. This idea of an unreliable narrator is mostly used in psychological genres and explains why we can get behind characters like the Joker and Dexter. 
While this idea revolving around protagonists may seem like its own thing, it very much overlaps with dialogue, because how you present your characters' interactions can strategically influence the rest of your story. My third tip for creating better dialogue between characters is to emphasize emotion. In visual media, it is much easier to convey emotion through voice change. Sure, we can draw how the character is feeling in the moment, but we are limited due to comic and mangas being silent. To really get across our message, we need to incorporate our dialogue. If a character is angered, add in more aggressive words or explanation points. Add a few cuss words or something out of character to show clear distress. If your character is upset, incorporate more pauses, aka dot dot dots, or even stuttering repeated words. Paying attention to how your character is feeling can really liven up your dialogue and make it feel more authentic. By consciously selecting words that fit the mood, your characters will avoid sounding robotic. My fourth tip on this list is to show and not tell. If you've never heard of the term information dumping or info dumping, let me break it down for you. Whenever possible, you should be showing your reader the world and characters you've created instead of telling them about it. I think it's acceptable to dedicate the first page or two to information dumping just to set the scene. Anything more than that though could be insulting to the reader. One common way authors unintentionally info dump is when they recap information the audience already knows. Another way authors subconsciously info dump is when they describe how characters are feeling instead of portraying it. If your character is angry, don't just have them yell, I'm angry. Show that emotion by having their expression become distressed and their way of speaking becoming more hostile. In real life, people aren't always aware of what they're feeling, and sometimes we say things that are different than how we actually feel. It's important to think about these things when writing dialogue because you want your characters to sound as realistic as possible. By doing so, your character becomes infinitely more relatable and empathetic to the reader. My fifth and final tip for taking your comic's dialogue to the next level is to avoid name drops. I'm guilty of this one myself, so don't beat yourself up too much if you fall victim to this one as well. Name dropping is when you repeatedly have your character say another character's name. Most of the time, authors do this early on to make sure the audience does not forget the character's name. However, if you think about real life conversations, how many times do we really use our friends' names when we're talking to them? I would say it's okay to name drop a few times in the very first chapter, but afterwards just use a name tag in the first scene they appear. Trust that your reader is smart enough to remember the name of your character, and even if they don't, who cares? People forget names all the time. Don't let your dialogue suffer because you're afraid of something insignificant. I hope you all got some kind of value out of this video. If you learned something new, please give the video a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below telling us about something you're currently working on. You can follow me on all my social media accounts using the links in my description. As always, keep creating guys. I'll see you all in the next one.